Five. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, actually, against Pia, uh, I um, played very nicely in the opening of my first game, and that, of course, helped me in the match. But right now, we're in round number five. Uh, I'm about to play against Valentina. And as I said, Valentina was very well prepared in the first game. It was her favorite, her pet opening, the Karo Khan defense. She opted for knight f6. She's changed. Uh, she used to play in bishop g4, but somehow now the attention of black shifted towards knight f6, and I can easily understand why. Actually, when during the quarantine uh, month, uh, I was... Um, thinking of trying something new, some new openings uh, with uh, black, and I started to uh, look for different Karakhan lines. I uh, I chose for myself knight f6 with no hesitation. So I also do play this line with black in blitz, especially in online blitz and in rapid. And the idea that uh, what black does not really um, it used to. Uh, used to be evaluated as a um, bad line for black because of this uh, pawns doubling on the f file, but somehow the modern uh, theory has um, advanced a lot, and nowadays uh, this pawn structure is not to be believed, is not to be seen as a negative. Um, negative thing for black and uh, actually they are doing pretty pretty fine in this line there are some very sharp lines with a uh, long side castle uh, but it's another story in this particular game uh, i played queen 2e2 uh, that's the difference between uh, these two lines that can happen via this move order when black plays knight f6 so there is no queen e2 and here I'm trying to use the fact that my pawn is still on d2 and play queen e2. Okay, so she took on e4, I took on e4, and again it's like a crossroad. Black has several options, one of it being queen to d5, trying to uh, get to an endgame. But in this particular game, uh, Valentina opted for knight d7, and again I also consider this move to be one of the strongest here right now at this exact point. Uh, bishop to c4, knight f6, knight f5 is a very nice, <laughs> nice trap. If you grab the queen, you get checkmated. Thank you so much, Plum Plum. Appreciate your support. Uh, but of course, it's a very well. Well, it can happen in a bullet game, but in a in a classical game on a high level, of course, black. Uh, well, players are always careful about uh, their kings. So e6 is uh, the move to make, and here I made a quite rare move, which is queen to e4. Normally, uh, white plays queen to e2, and then uh, I played this line uh, several times with white and with black. The first time being um, two years ago uh, against Maria Muzuchuk, I played it with white. She played b5, and here. White has a choice where to go, to d3 or to b3, both moves are possible, but black's plan is to play bishop b7 and c5 later on, okay, protecting the b5 pawn first if the bishop goes to b3, and for the moment I'm not sure how to fight for an advantage uh, here with white, that's why in the game I played, I opted for queen f4. So the idea of this move is that the queen is being transferred to g3, to the king side and after b5 my bishop can go to e2 can be retreated to e2 which looks a little bit more um, flexible in a way bishop g6 d4 castle queen g3 all these moves have been analyzed at home of course and here valentina made the best move well the moves that i consider the best and uh, we considered the best during our home preparation but she made it fast showing that she knows this line and she also prepared Knight to e4. A very nice move, attacking the queen, and the idea is that after queen to d3, black protects the knight by f5. Um, chess noob, thank you so much for a gifted subscription. Uh, okay, for giving out, giving out gifts up. Uh, the pawns. 
black spoons look funny right they look funny and uh they look quite weak strangely looking pawns i must say but somehow black gets um, they have a lot of uh, he, uh she has a lot of counter uh, ideas such as c5 and uh the my knight on e5 was also not very stable so knight to six six anyway that's what i decided to uh go for at home although the computer doesn't really suggest this move it suggests to castle immediately but i decided to take the pawn knight e5 and again i was in, in my book still bishop takes e5 uh, has been analyzed at home she played a5 it's one of the moves that uh black often makes in this uh, particular line with the idea to play b4 and bring the bishop to a6 and here i completely forgot what i prepared at home and i played f3 and f3 is not the best move here i think it helps actually black to improve the position of the knight instead i was planning to play short side castle and after b4 we re remove my queen to h3 and here the position well, it's still a little bit more pleasant for uh, white, probably, because of two bishops. But, of course, black has also a quite, I mean, nice, a nicely looking bishop on b7. And uh, the, the knight on e4 is also very well placed. So, nothing serious for white here. Instead, I've played f3. She... Uh, went to f6 and here castling which seems to be inaccuracy here i should have played c3 with the idea after bishop uh, a6 to play bishop f4 to be in time to uh, kind of rotate my pieces and to finish development that would have been uh, a good um, choice for me uh, instead as i mentioned i played castle and here's the problem is that uh, she plays rook to f to d8 and now kind of all of my pieces are hanging and uh, the fact that the pawn has moved to f3 weakens uh, this diagonal and well of course i didn't like this position at all during the game i thought for a long time and i played the moves that um well i played h4 the problem is that um she is threatening to play g5 she wants to play g5 she wants to uh win this knight on e5 because of this pin but i should have played rook f to d1 anyway apparently and after g5 uh, uh i should have i mean i should have calculated well and see that i do get some some counterplay but it was not very easy to notice and i did not notice it i thought that after rook after d1 she would just play g5 and win my knight and i did not calculate further on um so i played h4 and h4 is not a very well that's a bad move uh here she should have just played b4 um and if i play queen to d1 she plays knight d5 and my i cannot really retreat my bishop because again you see my pawn is not on f2 but on f3 and she wins uh, a pawn at least and if i play queen to d2 almost automatically we reach a very unpleasant uh, rook endgame for me that would be very hard to very hard to protect to defend um but well, that's Valentina. You should know her. She doesn't make obvious moves. She she often goes to the most um, unexpected way. Thank you for cheering. Um, knight h5. She goes, and I think that's a move in the wrong direction here because again, sometimes in chess, the most obvious moves are the strongest ones. And before, it's like why not to play i mean unless you see that the moves that you choose is uh, stronger but in that case knight h5 goes to the side uh well the pawn on f4 uh, i'm not sure it's better than on f5 it's hanging here and 
Actually, here I should have played knight to g4 immediately. And with after e5, rook f to e1, bishop c5 would, would lose simply. And after e takes d4, queen e4, bishop d3, and suddenly, no, one piece stands badly, the whole game stands badly, and it's not, uh, it's not just a saying. It is a fact. Sometimes if you put just one of your pieces badly, somehow your whole game goes to, um, to a very wrong direction. And so I should have played knight g4, and my position becomes much better. But somehow I decided to include, you know, it's so unpleasant to stay with your queen under all those pieces, so it's quite <laughs> logical, it's quite understandable that I try to move it out of all these threats at once, uh, at the very uh, first chance, and I did move it. But the problem is that I needed to get back. Uh, a4, queen to d3, and uh, here she played, uh, she made another, I think, bad move which is e5, uh, because because I could have played queen f5 immediately, queen g5, and uh, again, she doesn't really get a lot after... Um, it, it, it weakens the position. She should have uh, played uh, either b4 or knight g3. e5, rook f2, e1, knight g3 here, but now it's bad. Now it's bad, finally I play queen f5, queen h5, and suddenly my position becomes so, so nice. Her pawns start hanging, and uh, it's quite hard to play with uh, black, but Valentina found uh, quite an unexpected way to bring her forces together, a3. That move surprised me. I, I didn't really um, quite understand the idea. But her idea was to, you know, to somehow use the fourth rank suddenly for her pieces, for her rooks to be exact. Uh, and well, unfortunately for me, I was already in a time trouble and I didn't play the strongest bishop to d3 because I didn't like rook f4. But in that case, I should have noticed queen takes g3 and then e4, queen to g5. And that's how I could have won this game. But of course, there are many, too many ifs, right? Too many ifs. Um, and I, instead of rook d3, I played queen to e4, which is not correct. Which is unfortunately not correct, and it's made with the wrong idea to play queen d5. She played rook a4, and here I should have stopped somehow, I should have found this c3 move, which is impossible to find. Or, I don't know, even rook a to d1 probably would have been better, but of course, uh, well, the mate, the mate is here, the check is here. So a few moves that are quite logical, in my point of view, and suddenly the position becomes very um, difficult to defend because uh, my king is suddenly very weak and she has all these threats connected with the attack on the black squares and yes and suddenly and here yeah I, will, I am in the time trouble I'm in a huge time trouble and I made the wrong move the wrong choice which is quite understandable I should have played rook to b1 uh, with the idea of the queen to c3 to play king e2, so queen to c3 is not really a big deal. And rook to b1 is made with a threat. I also have some counter ideas, and that's I think the most important thing to counterplay, to be able to counterplay here. And after queen to e7, I have king e2, queen takes h4, and here not rook takes b5, which loses to queen h1, but c3 first. So this is a very important move to uh, play. The idea after bishop takes c3 to go rook c1. And again, her king is also quite shaky. And that should be a draw, I think. Uh, very close to a draw. And if after c3 she plays king, queen to h2, it also doesn't bring her victory, luckily for me. Uh, I'm also in time to stop this g pawn and this endgame. Oops, 
should be holdable should be holdable but again in a time trouble people tend to make mistakes uh, so instead of looking for counterplay i uh, made uh, just a move out of attack closer to my king but that's a very bad move because she has bishop to c3 and suddenly if i play bishop uh, rook e2 or rook e3 rook e4 follows i played rook e3 and she should have played rook e4 i don't know why she did not play rook f4 and then bishop d4 and then queen c2 that was one of um, the winning moments for her instead she played rook d8 queen e6 rook d4 king to e2 and here despite the fact that i was playing on seconds i made a very strong f4 move and my idea yeah my idea was to exchange the rooks and that was the right idea the correct idea and here i should have taken the rook play late queen f3 king f3 and it's closer to uh, a draw uh, actually this position similar to this position we'll see in the game instead i thought for quite a long time hesitating what to do whether to take on f4 or not and i decided to play queen d5 and this is the losing move a completely losing move and again surprise to me a mystery to me why such a strong attacking players valentino did not see quite an easy line which is queen g1 it's a very direct line of course we both saw it but we i think both saw that after queen to g7 queen to h3 um i'm doing fine but that's not true because the king goes to g5 and after queen takes g3 rook g4 should have been noticed and that's the game over that's how she could have won this game and well, and it would have been another story right another story instead she went to h6 here i finally took on f4 king to f3 it looks scary but in fact my king is not getting checkmated i took on f4 quite bravely bravely and quite correctly and from now on i was doing very well here uh, Valentina, mm, well, she could have, she could have made a draw at any point. Here, for example, she should have made a draw. She should have agreed that, well, alas, she didn't win it. Instead, she continued to play on. She continued to play for a win, as and it often, as an often, it often happens in Valentina's games. She kind of overpressed, and here that's already the wrong move queen e1 and suddenly it's black who is starting to fight for a draw because apparently if she exchanges the queens in despite the fact that we have opposite color bishop and game uh, my pawns are quite far away and uh, it's almost impossible to hold this end game as playing black that's why here i should have played king to g3 since i'm threatening to give a checkmate on g6 i'm kind of forcing black to um, exchange the queens and here i have good chances to win whether this end game uh, won end game or not i don't know yet i have not analyzed in details just yet instead i played queen to e2 and here i could have played queen e4 and get back to king g3 line but somehow of course i was already tired and playing on seconds already and um well but luckily for me i did manage to exchange the queens anyway because of this annoying checkmating attack uh, valentina decided to exchange the queens and actually we exchanged the queens even in a better situation for me because my king is already in the center and i need this king to help my pawn uh, on the c file to go forward and apparently this end game is won for uh, white she played g4 well which loses i think h4 is loses as well because she just does not have i mean she cannot you know improve the position of her bishop she cannot bring it to c7 without letting my pawn get to a6 and after g4 in the game uh, um where did yes here she played king to f6 and of course i was winning immediately with c6 
And that um, I decided to repeat the position. I realized here that King of Six is losing. Valentina also noticed it, but um, it doesn't help her because, as I said, her position is lost here. I play a4. She doesn't have time to take on g3 because my pawn, my pawn just go fast, go forward so fast. And after bishop to c7, she just resigned. She resigned, and of course, that's a very sad uh, game for Valentina because she was dominating. Clearly, she uh, was very well prepared in the opening. She got an advantage, and in time trouble. Ah, she was so close to winning this game, but, but, you know, sometimes you really need to stay calm and realistic. Uh, not to overpress, not to lose this balance between what you wish to happen and what's actually going on. And, uh, well, in the next game, in my second game against Valentina, that's gonna be the last game for today because it's already been... Um, it's been a long stream, already almost two hours, so let's try to... Uh, get really fast uh, through the second one, although it's also quite interesting. I opted for a very quite a sharp line of the Archangelsk variation, which, well, that's what we call it in Russia. I'm not sure how it's called in the English literature, uh, but, uh, well, there are many nuances again on the very... Um, on each move, I will not dive into details. And here I played instead of the main line, which goes rook b8, I played, I opted for a um, um, more risky line, let's put it this way, which is bishop to b7. Um, well, bishop g5, Valentina played. Another uh, possible move is rook e1 here, h4, and uh, here. White usually takes on f6 and play bishop d5. That's how opening theory goes. Or take on f6 in this mm, move order and play d5. Because after the moves that Valentina chose, and I must add she already uh, thought for quite a long time, actually Valentina mm, uh, used to be a d4 player. But now she switched to e4, and in this particular tournament she um, used the Rui Lopez, which is of course a huge amount, it indicates uh, about the huge amount of work she's done at home, but um, of course she's not um, um, yet at full ease with all these nuances uh, and uh, different move orders, and that's why I opted for I chose for the game against her this very rare, uh, relatively rare line. The problem that after bishop g4, h4, I can play g5 and I can take on e4. It does look scary, but according to the computer evaluation, the evaluation is 0, 0, 0, so it's equal. Uh, there are many moves for a white. Again, a takes b5, rook takes a8 is possible. Um, Bishop d5 is another way to fight for compensation. Knight b to d2 is also quite a reasonable choice. Uh, black can take on d2 or take on g3. Both lead to approximately equal end game, uh, middle game. Uh, I took on d2 because after knight takes g3 I was afraid of some counterplay after f takes g3, which is not true. Knight takes g3. Uh, was a good move and here why should take on g3 with h pawn in that case for some reason king f1 i don't know why king f8 and not castle but anyway king f8 king g7 probably keeping the rook on a on the h file is uh, quite strong but in the game i took on d2 with the knight which is also quite strong knight takes it 2 and here i should have castled and that was the problem with this game i don't know why but i just didn't want to castle for a very long time and that was wrong i should have castled and that's um, approximately how the game could have continued after that with with approximately equal position um i played queen to f6 which is okay for the moment we took 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 
queen to g6 okay i transferred the queen to g6 but here valentina well i, I uh, she was thinking for a very long time and i was calculating after queen f3 i was getting ready to play f5 i like the move f5 so much with the idea after bishop d5 uh, to take on d4 and that is the correct line i'm winning here as black but she started with bishop d5 and for so for no apparent reason <laughs> just for, just for, for the reason being i was not able to hold the pressure well enough to stop to breathe and to make a castle i made this f5 move which is apparently is not losing the game thankfully uh, and luckily but of course just short side castle was so much stronger that after queen f3 i have king to g7 i just did not realize that here I saw this line. I just did not see that f6 is simply winning here. Just winning. Uh, and that could, that was much better to castle here. Instead, I went all in. And I said, luckily for me, uh, the position remains about equal. c4, a very strong move that Valentina made. King e7, another strong move, but by black. And here, Valentina made. Uh, mm, I don't think she made uh, the right choice. She played c5, which doesn't seem to be right. She should have taken on b5. I would probably take on e4 or play rook d8, which leads to approximately the same position. And that could have been uh, the situation. Uh, we could have reached this situation, um, which looks quite shaky for black with my king just uh, you know being in the center in the um, middle of everywhere but in fact it's not that uh, dangerous and i can play queen c5 and my battery kind of gluing white rook to the f2 square and uh, well that's an approximate computer line which eventually leads to a draw a very beautiful draw Instead, as I said, she played c5, but that just helps me to bring my bishop to a5, taking under control a very important e1 square. Uh, here, bishop b4 would have been stronger, but I calculated the line that actually happened in the game, and this line is quite a forcing line. Uh, and, well, I think this position is about equal. Uh, but somehow Valentina misplayed it a little bit. She needed to play for a draw. Uh, and, oh, she needed to win this game. And that's the problem. Because, for example, the strongest move here leads to quite an equal endgame. Uh, but she should have played queen a1 anyway here. Because it's not, it's not that simple yet. She does have a chance, some chances, right? Um, my king is quite weak. The queens are not gone yet. So she should she should uh played she should have played queen to a1. Alessia, thank you for the raid. I do have I get I'm getting so many raids from the girls, from my streamers colleagues that's uh today. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Well we're trying to finish. I think in ten minutes or so I'm going to end the stream. Again, two hours is not enough for for my two uh, matches uh, we're discussing match number five round number five already from uh, from the world cup from my world cup journey quarterfinals and the second game of it so valentina she was in a time trouble of course after all this uh, long thoughts in the opening and in the middle game and she made a very logical move h3 uh, prophylactical move but it uh, loses time and that time I need to play rook d4 to uh, secure the queen side and to prepare my king's journey to safety finally to b7. f3, king to d7, uh, rook d3, and I played h5, king c8 uh, was possible, uh, queen to b1, and here I'm just in time. I'm just in time. I could have started with king c8, but of course g3 like is more logical. And here she should have taken on g3 and make a draw. Unfortunately for her, it's just a draw. Or either she makes it or I make it, and probably she's seen it. She might have seen it. 
But again, she was playing for a win. She was in a must-win situation. And she tried her best to leave the pieces, all the pieces on the board. But unfortunately for Valentina, my king. As soon as my king gets, gets into safety, my pawn on b5 is just way too strong. Way too strong. And uh, my position just becomes uh, quite and easily winning. Quite and easily winning. And I did win this game very fast by simply by checkmating my opponent. Suddenly it's her king who get who got under checkmating attack. Well, well, that's it for my quarterfinal. Winning in the quarterfinal um, against Valentina, I qualified for the semifinal. It was a semi-final with Tan Zhongyi and then winning semi-final I qualified for the final match and we will have a look at uh, these uh, matches uh, tomorrow same time same time same place so uh, I hope to see you all back um, tomorrow at this time and yeah we'll go over my uh, my victory uh, the semi-final victory over Tan and then the final match against Alexandra Goryachkina still actually to tell you the truth still I, I just cannot comprehend cannot believe that happened to me uh, cannot explain how it all was possible and um, well that's definitely a dream come true um, and um, We'll continue to talk about dream that happened happened uh, in July 2021 with me uh, tomorrow, same time, same place. Uh, I'm going to send a raid to someone who is streaming right now since I was getting so many raids today. It was a pleasure. And of course, thank you so much for uh, listening and for watching. I think I see that the Lily Lily Koridze is streaming. So let me rate her. She, since we have girls rates today. Um. Yep. Okay, guys, take care. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all tomorrow, same time, same place for my semi-final and final story of the FIDE Women's World Cup 2021 that I won, that I won on August 3rd, 2021 to be exact. Okay, just know thank you for your help as always, Dirk J, if you're here again, also thank you so much and see you all soon. Bye-bye, guys. Mm -hmm.